the genuine article. Looks beyond the label to find information that will save you money and guide you to value. On this edition, we run alongside a brand that helped define the modern athletic shoe. We've come a long way from canvas trainers and we show you how professional athletes turn in their top performances with made-to-measure shoes. And with a new program, even regular runners can get customized shoes at a much lower price. But don't get too lowbrow. Bad shoes just shouldn't be worn and expensive problems can be created by cheap shoes. Whether it's the Boston Marathon or the Olympics, the footwear you choose to compete in can mean the difference between gold or obscurity. So if you're going to put yourself to the test, you'll want to make sure you're wearing nothing less than the genuine article. Over 80 years ago in Herzegonarach, Germany, a young shoemaker made house slippers from old military canvas bags to help put food on his family's table. He was also a keen soccer player and he soon adapted those slippers to his soccer game. The attention he gained for his lightweight, comfortable sports shoes did nothing but grow from the first day he wore them. His name was Adi Dasla. Adidas has been around the longest. They do make a lot of different shoes. They stick with what works, very technically sound running shoes. Since Adi Dasla started making shoes in the, the 1920s, uh, his basic philosophy of working with athletes, listening to the, what their needs are, modifying their, uh, his technologies and his innovations, um, that philosophy still remains at the heart of Adidas now. By the 1920s, Adi Dassler was already experimenting with running spikes to improve performance. By the 1930s, he was the leading sports shoe manufacturer in the world, making 30 different shoes for 11 sports and the tradition of innovation continues to the present day. See, even weekend warriors like myself know that 90% of the game is in your head. And your head's a lot better when you know the equipment that's on your feet is fitted perfectly to your body. And that was something only available to the top athletes in the world, until... Adidas came up with My Adidas, a traveling program that lets you be properly fitted in a way that has never been possible before and you can find where it is by going to the Adidas website. The My Adidas experience is really a, a running shoe customization experience. It really is Adidas's continuing effort to address the different needs of runners' foot strikes. You have your foot measured and scanned to get a detailed outline of the exact length and width of each foot to within one-tenth of a centimeter. Most people's feet are actually not the same length. Uh, that you might have one foot that's size eight and the other is eight and a half. So it allows you to have the exact right length for the shoe. It also allows you to have the exact width, so you have several options for the width, so the fit is really correct. Next, you lightly jog across a pressure pad, which reveals the exact placement of the foot under pressure. That information goes into a computer to help narrow down the best shoe for you. You can also choose the performance of the shoe, which means if you need more support from the shoe, they actually build the shoe so it's more supportive. They can build the shoe so it's a little softer. They can make it so that it will be more durable, or they can make it so that it will feel nicer when you're actually running in it. Now you try on a dummy boot to make sure that the width, arch fitting, and tightness are exactly to your liking. And then, of course, the standard design thing where you can pick your own color or put your name on it and things like this. After you've made your decision, you'll just have to wait three weeks while they create your dream sneaker. So if any of us can have a pair of custom-made athletic shoes, where do the big guys go? What do the top athletes have available to them in terms of technology? That's next. Coming up on The Genuine Article, we'll see how the pros do it. On the genuine article, custom sneakers.
for the best in the world. Welcome back. There are 33 bones in the human foot. And when you've been, hi, congratulations. When you've been running on them, like these young ladies have, for 26.3 miles, if any one of those bones is out of alignment, you'll know it all over your body. In fact, a quarter of all the bones in our body are in our feet. That's why it's so important to make sure that what you can afford is nothing but the best. Most sports shoe production has shifted to Asia, but Adidas has a specialized production facility in Germany that creates new models and prototypes, as well as custom shoes, for some of the most valuable feet in the world, professional athletes. Uh, the Made to Measure department in Scheinfeld is a place where they really specially custom make shoes. They may even design their own last for some of our athletes and things like this. They have their own last so they can build the shoes that are actually specifically specified not just to length and width, but to that person's exact foot. If they have a bump or they had an injury or they had something in their past, they can build a shoe to actually protect them or to fit them specifically for every need they have. To make a custom shoe, they create an outline of the foot, a 3D foam imprint, and then take several measurements of the foot. About 12 workers in Scheinfeld make 400 pairs of made-to-measure shoes each month for the world's best athletes. Um, one of the most famous athletes, especially in Europe, is football player David Beckham. We had a lot of shoes made for him last year during the World Cup. And, well, his feet are quite close to a standard size, so the major measure last for David Beckham is not too much amended. But he has very individualised shoes with a name embroidered on the tongue, with a place number on the heel patch, and some different amendments from time to time. But it's not just athletes who need comfortable shoes. Anyone who's prepared to pay can get Adidas made to measure. Adidas's shoe made its Olympic appearance in 1928, and ever since then, athletes have wanted more from their footwear. Whether they're wrestlers or fencers or sprinters or long distance runners or even bobsledders, what they have on their foot changes how well they can perform. The interesting thing maybe about the most recent Olympics in Sydney was that they made shoes for 26 of 28 Olympic sports. They had shoes in almost every sport imaginable except for sailing and uh, equestrian. It's something like fencing, for example. If you look at them, you can see they're actually two different shoes because when a fencer stands, they stand with their feet perpendicular to each other. Uh, and so they've made modifications. This shoe actually is built at an angle because when they lunge, the foot actually collapses inward like this, so it helps them push better. This shoe is more cushioned in the heel because when they attack, um, they land quite hard on their heels, so there's all kinds of modifications and things built into these shoes that make them quite specialized for their task. So you can see that if you're going to go into a store and just ask for what size they have, you're probably not going to be able to take advantage of all the technology available. It's best to go to someone who really knows what's in the shoe and what's best for you. All of the different companies have different kinds of support different kinds of technologies. They're all putting millions of dollars into developing materials uh, to allow you to run a lot injury free. Uh, it's, it's more about getting the shoe that works best for your feet. Every company now makes running shoes that span the whole price range from $50 up to $200. Hey, there you go. You see, sometimes it's more important to have a good athletic shoe than it is a street shoe because it has to put up with a lot more. But it needn't be out of your financial reach. While custom-made shoes for Olympic athletes can range up to $800, the My Adidas program offers many of the same custom features for an average retail price. But if a basic shoe is all you need, be careful. We show you how to protect your body and find comfort at an affordable price. Bottom line is, if you think these are expensive, think again, because an injury can take you out of work and cost you a lot more. So be kind to your feet, they're doing a good job for you. Coming up next, we stay in our sweats as we honor an American sporting classic. When we return on the genuine article, the beginnings of a perfect inning. A person should spend between 70 and $90 for a good running shoe. Going to a store that specializes in the activity or has employees that can fit you correctly in the shoes that you're going to be using is the most important part. 
Most manufacturers make the running shoes smaller than regular sizing, so you have to go up in size. They should be comfortable in the store and work with your feet in the store before going out. Don't expect them to break in after a while. They should work for your feet right now. As long as you're just running in the shoes, you'll get about five or 600 miles. For most people, that's seven or eight months. If you're going out for a normal run, you've got happy feet, you've got happy ankles, you've got happy knees. As long as that's happening, then that, that was the right shoe for you. on the Genuine Article, an American pastime. When Babe Ruth had his 60 home runs in 1927, and when Joe DiMaggio had his 56 game hitting streak in 1941, the same year that Ted Williams had a .406 average, they were all holding what they considered nothing less than the Genuine Article. Wood bats and baseball go hand in hand. And even with all the new technology available, the perfect piece of white ash is still a pro player's best bet. And if you want to look and feel like a pro, get your name emblazoned on a bat. But even without your name, a basic wood bat makes a sound like no other when you hit one out of the park. Up until 1884, there was no one bat people went after. It wasn't until 1884 when Pete, the old gladiator Browning, who played for the Louisville Eclipse, decided that he needed to break his slump with a better bat. Went to a friend called Bud Hillerick who worked with him in his wood shop all night, turning a bat that Pete said was exactly right for him. The next day, he went out and hit three for three, and that bat became known as the Falls City Slugger, and everyone wanted one. And today, they still want them. The only difference is they call him the Louisville Slugger. And it's the dream of every little leaguer to hold one in the glare of the Major League Kleeg lights. It seems like when a, when a minor league guy comes up, he knows about Louisville Slugger. You know, he's waiting to get an order of bats from, from, from Louisville Slugger. There are other bat manufacturers around, but overall, you know, dollar for dollar and cent for cent, Louisville's probably best. And amongst the big leagues, there are different preferences when it comes to the tiniest detail in bat styles. Well, I, I like the northern white ash myself personally. I think it gets the best, best carry on the ball and it feels good. And I mean, the crack of the bat's what I like to hear. So uh, with the Louisville, I always get a good crack off the bat. And that's the one I prefer. And that satisfying crack is what's kept Louisville Slugger the heavy hitter in its field for 120 years. But down in Louisville, they know history waits for no man. It's all about the moment about to happen. Well, we've been in business probably longer than anyone, but I will tell you, I don't rely on that as meaning anything to a 20-year-old kid. It doesn't. All he knows is what's right in front of him at the moment. How serious are these batters about their equipment? Like you wouldn't believe. Ted Williams, the winningest hitter in baseball history, used to go to Louisville himself to choose the wood that his bats were to be made from. And Keith Hernandez, a man who took his team to victory at the 86 World Series, could tell the difference between his bats by a degree of half an ounce. I would get 36 bats in for him, and he would literally take them and swing them and drop them into piles, and it would be his weight of 31 ounce, 31 and a half ounce, 32 ounce. And I thought he was crazy, because he was saying, oh, this bat's too heavy, this one's too light. He could tell by half an ounce? At one time, he had 48 bats, I measured them. He had 47 out of 48 to the half ounce right. But that kind of physical memory is the talent he has in his body, that he knows exactly how things should feel when he does it right. I guess that's what makes him professional. And he was some hitter. But it's not just brand loyalty that keeps Louisville Slugger at the top of the major leagues. They will do anything to make sure the bat that's been chosen by the player is perfect for that individual. Doesn't matter how long it takes or how difficult the task. We make like 85 different models, so it involves different handles, different barrel sizes. They can order different finishes. So you're trying to figure out what makes them comfortable hitting. And a lot of it, you'll ask them maybe what they've tried, what they don't know about, and try to get in their, their head a little bit, because they all do it differently. 
because you're dealing with, with the psychology of failure. They only hit 30% of the time. If you had 333, you're very good. You fail 70%. No one can be that bad at a job except a baseball player. So you deal with a lot of variables here and trying to make them happy every day. Making them happy means making the perfect bat, and that starts with a great tree. The piece of wood is the hardest thing of this whole process. You can't control the trees. Guys want wide grain traditionally. Grain is a growth ring in a tree. So if it's wide grain, it means it, the tree grew a lot that year. Nothing more, nothing less. That's the toughest part of the, the process is getting enough of the good timber to make all the guys happy at one time. The wood for Louisville Slugger comes from 5,000 acres of white ash in New York and Pennsylvania. The trees are harvested at 40 to 60 years of age and cut into 40 inch long sections. These sections are cut into cylinder shapes called billets, three inches in diameter. Then all the best billets land in Louisville. The first and probably one of the most important is the gentleman that picks the timber for that particular order. He knows if it's a small barrel bat that weighs 31 ounces, that billet has to weigh 91 to 93 and a half ounces. So the first process is the lathe operation, which turns the billet into the rough form of the bat, which doesn't take long for the machine to do it. It makes the bat in about 10 seconds. Then it goes from there. The guy actually burns the logos into the bat. And he has to burn that on the cross grain because you always want to hit the ball on the strongest part of the wood. After that, they will cut some of the excess off the bat. And at that point, the order will say, you know, black, brown, flame tree, whatever the finish is, then that's when they either burn the, the wood, which is a flame tree, dip the bat in the vat of water-based lacquer, which is either black or brown, or we've got a new process, it's a UV spray. So there's a lot of different avenues that the bat goes once it uh, is actually turned in the lathe. These bats are handcrafted originals, and as famous and as popular as these bats are, the company who makes them does it more for love than money. Wood bats is an important business to us, not only from a, a profit point of view, it's not our biggest profit in our business, but it is our heritage. I guess you could call it the soul of our business, if you will. When we return, a bat the babe turned into a piece of history. Coming up next on The Genuine Article, a baseball legacy. On the genuine article, the great bats of yesterday and today. So when does a $70 bat become a priceless item? But it makes history. The most famous and the most uh, valuable artifact we have is Babe Ruth's bat from 1927. And uh, he carved a notch around the trademark for every home run like an old gunslinger would carve them on his pistol handle. And there are 21 notches on that bat uh, and then he broke it and returned it to the company. There are only three known Babe Ruth bats where he carved notches around the trademark, and I have no idea why he did some and didn't do others. That's our most valuable artifact. We also have two of Ty Cobb's bats. We have uh, Pete Rose bats. We have Lou Gehrig. We have George Brett's bat that has pine tar all over it. Not the famous pine tar bat, which many fans are familiar with, but so we have quite a few artifacts. The, the main draw really is the factory where people can watch today's players bats being made. Major League professionals have 85 different bat models to choose from. These players all have different preferences of shape, length, weight and color. So the finished bat is highly individual. If a player orders a bat, he usually orders a model number, like a K55. Well, the K55 master model is kept in this room, so that if anything ever happens to every K55 in the world, we still have one in here. The most popular model number currently today in Major League Baseball is one called P72, but the most, probably the most famous to most people would be uh, this bat, which is a model R43, which means nothing, but when, they, when I tell them it's Babe Ruth's model, 
then that means something to them. So this is, this is his master model. In other words, when his bats were made by us, this is the model we used. And we, we actually made a clone of this bat. Now, this knob is a little cracked and splintered and broken. But and nevertheless, uh, this, this was the model we used. Now we have several master models of the really you know, famous bats. So if, if something happens to this, we still have another one. Louisville's dedication to America's greatest pastime has put them where they are today. I think one reason we're an American icon is people have grown up with us. Now today they may be growing up with us 